Oh, should we buy or sell the dry bulk ETF? So first off, read this disclaimer carefully. Then do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. So this is under a you know a category called industrials, you know one of the major major you know uh, stock sectors. So dry bulk shipping at uh, the ETF is you know six ish percent from the fifty two week uh, low, but still minus seventy four percent away from the highs. So yeah, clearly this uh, uh, industry has been in a downtrend. Uh, the interesting thing is that we are now below um, a lot of periods leading all the way back here into 2018. So the bears are technically very much still in control, but um, for most of the time we have been higher. Uh, so what is interesting is that we have retraced almost this entire rally, so we are back to this key level here that could potentially become a bit of a horizontal uh, support level. So let me just draw that uh, in. So around here, this is where you could get some horizontal uh, support. And uh, when we look around, you know, the daily data points, yeah, you know, we are below all kinds of moving averages. Uh, so we are definitively very, very low, but we're not really at the low where it's safe to short either. Because when we look here at RSI, there have been some strong rallies from this level before, like in back here in 2018, if we can find uh, that low. Like here as an example, you got a very substantial bounce from this ETF. And if we measure, you know, from the low here to this uh, high, all of a sudden you get near 31%. So this is a dangerous place for the beers as well. Looking at, you know, the moving average PPOs here. We are very far away from the 20 week moving average. Uh, daily data points, you know, very oversold. And accumulation distribution is holding up, you know, relatively well. So there are definitely some kind of stealth buyers uh, here. The, the distance from the green 50 day moving average and the blue 100 day moving average is uh, at very low levels. So what I write here in the notes is uh, oversold and horizontal support. So I give the bulls a three here. Uh, this is, it's more dangerous to be short at these levels, I think, than to be bullish. Looking here at the seasonality, we do not get anything calculated for um, the right end of the screen, but to the left here over the last five years, we do see that August is the second strongest month. So the seasonality here is definitively beneficial based on, you know, the limited data we do have. September and October are weak, uh, also November, but uh, August is most relevant uh, now. I give the bulls uh, three here on seasonality. Uh, they only get three because we have so few years of data. And also um, the months after August were weak uh, and that, you know, sub subtracts uh, from the score. But overall, yeah, seasonality is bullish. Now look look at some fundamentals. Uh, so I am comparing the IIT, the iShares US Transportation ETF, with you know, uh, uh, you know the dry bulk shipping ETF. Uh, when we look here at you know performance a uh, year to date, uh, dry bulk is definitively underperforming. Uh, looking here at you know the beta, beta is. Um, lower uh, actually for, for dry bulk. I'm not entirely sure whether this price earnings data is correct because we do get zero here. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm questioning the data we get here for the BD, BDRI ETF. Let's look at the holdings three. Okay, I'm not entirely sure about uh, the data. Okay, so here I think I got you know, the reason why there's a bit of an issue. Uh, so yeah, it gives uh, long only exposure to the nearest calendar quarter of dry bulk rate futures contracts on specified in indexes. So that's why uh, there's problems calculating, uh, you know, price earnings and uh, the like. Uh, here you can see that the expense ratio is pretty high. Um, but yeah, uh, there's something just unique here about how it is structured. There are dry bulk shipping stocks though. But anyway, based purely on the fundamentals, I do give the bulls a five here. Um, this uh, industry is very depressed, uh, so it is undervalued. 
but that doesn't mean automatically that it will attract bulls because uh, there's probably quite a few who think that this might be a value trap. So let's look at relative performance. Uh, so there is a 74% long-term correlation with the S&P 500, 76% with the transportation ETF, uh, and then you have 68% with the crude oil, and then minus 8% uh, with the dollar index. So short term, uh, 61% S&P 500, 68% here with uh, transportation ETF, minus 11% with crude oil, and minus 72% here with the dollar index. Uh, so the strongest correlation we do get is unsurpri unsurprisingly with the IIT, which is with IIT, the transportation ETF. So what happens with this ETF is going to have the biggest effect on the dry bulk ETF. Uh, so in this case, we have seen a pretty strong bounce here from the red 200 week moving average. Very strong, frankly. Uh, we are heading into a cluster of uh, horizontal uh, resistance levels. Uh, looking here at you know, the dailies, uh, I mean, there is a lot of progress, but uh, let's look a bit at you know, RSI and PPO here. Yeah, so it's a bit, you know, on the weeklies, there still is some fuel left. I'm looking here at you know, the dailies, we are testing, you know, the high end of RSI and you do see that quite a few times this has been the high. So it's, it's been, you know, a level where you expect some pullback. Also the PPO is rather elevated. So, so the bulls have, you know, made a strong move, but maybe they got a bit, in, bit too enthusiastic here because you know, quite a few who sit on profits from these uh, lows, they will be tightening their stops when they get into this kind of uh, overbought-ish uh, territory. Here is the relationship between the, the dry bulk uh, ETF and the transportation ETF. Uh, looking here at RSI, we are very close to a historically very viable territory. Quite a few times where we have been towards this uh, yeah, level slightly below oversold uh, RSI, it's been very viable, meaning dry bulk has a strong tendency to outperform uh, the transportation ETF. Uh, so we are not going to get any kind of seasonality data here. Uh, let's, let's quickly look at the chart here on uh, uh, the daily data points. And if you look, you know, back here, um, we are literally at the same RSI level. Uh, this time back in, you know, the third ish of November, 2021, it was a very good time to rotate into the dry bulk, um, ETF. So this is rather interesting. So let's compare the IIT with, um, the S and P 500. So this is a rather noisy chart. Uh, very messy. We are in a messy territory also here on the RSI. So meaning. There's a bunch of resistance levels, but also a bunch of support levels. So it's uh, a bit chaotic. Uh, so let's look at the seasonality here. So in red over the last 10 years, we usually see transportation underperform a bit into the mid of August, but then we do see some outperformance into early se September. In blue over the last uh, seven years and green over the, the last five years, uh, transportation usually underperforms S&P 500 into uh, yeah, 12th ish of August, but that is when we enter a period of out performance. So I give the bulls here a three on relative uh, performance. So we do end up with a score of 3.5 in favor of uh, the bulls. Uh, the key entry signal is, uh, is that we are oversold and we are at horizontal ish uh, support. This is not a clean trade, but this is definitely one of those to have on your bullish uh, radar. On the topic of transportation, uh, let's look at some transportation stocks. So uh, for the car industry, you have Ford Motor uh, definitively been on a very strong rally after finding support here on the 200 week moving average. Uh, this green 50 week moving average might become a bit of a problem because you see that this week we were surgically rejected at it. But it's not like a shocker to see any, to see resistance at such a key moving average. 
and looking at maybe the daily oh yeah oh yeah looking at the daily rsi we did sort of get a bit into too enthusiastic here but nonetheless a strong uh, rally here is uh, the cruise ship uh, industry uh, candidate carnival corporation ccl uh, so this is interesting because if we let me just draw that in we have fallen down into something that could become very much uh, a double bottom this is also a horizontal support level this is interesting i mean we have fallen down a lot now uh, a lot of pessimism is priced in so if we do measure a bit here play around with the percentages just to get up to these levels here is like a 220 percent rally so that is pretty pretty healthy uh, for the space industry, we do have Virgin Galactic Holdings. Uh, so this is a messy chart because on the one hand, we are below all kinds of levels. So there is a bunch of resistance above us. You also have here the purple 20 week moving average, which uh, pretty clearly here is very beneficial to the bears. I mean, they just come back here to short and short uh, the stock. Simultaneously, we are very low. This is this is a dangerous place also to become very bearish. Like it's safer to to become bearish when you are overbought, but at these levels, it's it's um, high tension uh, short. Uh, we we could definitively draw in a potentially very substantial rounding bottom here. Uh, rounding bottoms are formed in a very jagged way, so. It's ideally the best time to you know buy you know the lower end of these uh, pullbacks uh, as the rounding bottom forms. The thing is that you know I am definitively very bullish on space exploration. The issue is that we this stock is definitively very volatile. Here is Harley Davidson uh, motorcycles. Yeah, uh, this chart is, it's a messy chart, uh, a lot of, you know, volatility. Uh, we have recently seen a bit of a rally, but we are meeting problems here at, you know, the blue 100 week moving average, looking at the daily data points. Uh, so the 200 day, it has been relatively tradable in the past, but you see that there is a lot of noise around that moving average. It is not clean. And you can also see here that the candlesticks are a bit tall, a bit tall over all over the place. And the wicks uh, on the upper end and the lower end are also tall. So this is a this is not a stock where you can have a tight stop on your position. But anyway, the bulls are trying to make some gains here, but um, noisy. For those who are into bicycling, this is the Shimano stock uh, listed on the Tokyo exchange. Uh, so we do see that you know the 200 week moving average worked out pretty well as uh, support uh, the bulls are now doing something a bit ambitious uh, we can see that um, they are testing here this uh, blue 100 week moving average which has been very favorable to well, 100 day okay so blue 100 day moving average it has been favorable to the bears but we did close above it now uh, closing above it one time is not you know enough to make all the bearish you know close out their positions, but I guarantee you there were quite a few bearish uh, positions that were closed uh, as we uh, you know closed the 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 week uh, above that key resistance level because here uh, you can see that back here we did get clean rejection here as well uh, on the candlesticks very cleanly rejected but now it is getting a bit more dangerous here for the bears. Uh, further, uh, let me just draw it in. It's also uh, a bit thicker like that. This is a bit of an inverse head and shoulders pattern, which is, you know, bullish. So uh, there's a bunch of stuff happening now in the broad transportation uh, sector. Uh, when it comes to dry bulk shipping, definitively very low, very depressed. Uh, but then again, it is about buying low and selling uh, high. So I guess if you have a longer term horizon and have the stomach for some volatility, then this is not like the worst uh, time uh, to become bullish on, on the bulk uh, shipping. Uh, the issue, of course, is that, you know, for this ETF to form a, a real low, uh, we need to have the average participant in the market also come to the same conclusion. 
uh, because you know you need more buyers than sellers. However, if no one becomes bullish on a given security in a downtrend, then it will continue to go down. So that's the paradox of the market. Yeah. Uh, for a law to be formed, uh, pessimists must become optimists. Um, so yeah, it's the way it is. But whatever you do, you do of course, uh, you want to use uh, stops, uh, be market neutral, and uh, let the trend be your friend.